Okay, we're going to play this evening on a lovely theme, dreams and fantasy. And I thought to begin with, I would read what I consider to be a very beautiful section of Plato's Republic. Now he has many techniques, many kinds of yoga techniques in the Republic, Symposium, Phaedo, Phaedrus. But the only place where he talks about man getting self-knowledge and builds around it a technique for exploration is in the Republic. And when he does so, he talks about dreams. The end of the dream work is to produce what is called the apprehension of truth. So let me just quickly say a few words about it. What line are you at? Or what book of the Republic? Book nine. And if you need a reference to it, it's about 572, 571 um, E. But when I suppose a man's condition is healthy and sober, and he goes to sleep after rousing his rational part, and entertains it with fair words and thoughts, and attaining to clear self-consciousness, while he has neither starved nor indulged to repletion his app appetitive part, so that he may not be lulled to sleep, and so that doesn't disturb the better part by pleasure or pain, but may suffer that an isolated purity to examine and reach out towards and apprehend some of the things unknown to it in the past, present, and future. And when he has in a like manner tamed his passionate part and does not, after a quarrel, fall asleep with anger still awake within him, but has quieted the two elements in his soul, quicken the third in which reason resides, and so goes to his rest, you are aware that in such a case he is most likely to apprehend truth. And the visions of his dreams are least likely to be lawless. So, Plato plays with dreams, and that's an essential part of an exploration. Now, look here, what we're going to do, it is really three parts, and we won't be able to finish the third, but I'll give the three together. Dreams, fantasy, and random thoughts. Most people regard the life of man, the mental life of man, to be irrational, subject to all kinds of random thoughts, bombarded here and there by all kinds of things. Then he indulges in fantasy, which he can't control. Some, to, to some degree he can, but some degree he can't. And then the dream world comes in with its apparent irrationality. We would, what we need to do is to see that all of this is rational, rational on two levels. The structure behind each is intelligible. And being intelligible, we can see how each of these parts fit together into a unity. Now, if we can do that, then we will have a basis for saying that man's cognitive functioning, the way in which he functions, is indeed rational if we can understand, however, the structure of its intelligibility. If we can do that, then we can say, man is indeed rational. Not because we want to believe it, because we can present evidence in these three realms that justifies that claim. Now, what we need to do then is to get a dream, 
explore it, take the very same way of exploring dreams into fantasy, take the very same way of exploring them both and put them into random thoughts. Now, we can talk about these three for a while and contrast one with the other, but let's not do that. Anyone ready to bring a dream? Let's do it. And then from the dream, let's make comparisons. That way it's much more fun. Anybody bring a dream? In the car, maybe. In the car, maybe? While you were driving. No, I don't know. Did you bring one? No. Did you bring one? No. You should always bring a dream. Just like when you go out for coffee, you should always bring your wallet. I have one. You have one? Yeah. Thank you. Did you write it down? No, it's memorized. Oh. OK. Now, to do dream work, to do dream work, fantasy, <laughs> fantasy work, random thought work, the ideal way to approach it is tape it, audio tape it. Wait a while, write it out. Let some time lapse, discuss it. Once you do this, you will see that the differences between these three ways is so profound a difference that from that point on, you will always try to record it because the richness and especially the idiosyncratic use of language in dreams and in fantasies, you are not going to be able to remember. It's so interesting, a thing. And that can only be, of course, be demonstrated if someone had a tape dream and we can show it. But in any case, you should do this yourselves, always. And then you can see it once and for all, and then you can proceed with it. So in any case, thank you for your... Uh, now, uh, would you accept the, the possibility that we might explore it and push it here or there? Sure. Good, all right. But if at any point it's uh, uh, distressful or conflicting for you, you can pull out and we can go on to something else. All right. All right. Thank you. Go ahead. First, when was it? Mm -hmm. When was it? A few years ago. How many? A few years ago. A couple of years ago. Wow, this is a good one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I was in a, like a dark street alley. Oh, I'm good at drawing dark street alleys. <laughs> Art. <laughs> You can teach people philosophy, you can't teach them to appreciate great art. Go ahead. And there is a, a steel terrace type balcony with stairs coming down. Ah. And uh, this woman with black, she, her face was a little pale. She came down the steps, mm. the steps to me. Mm. And She's in black? In black or? She was in like a black out like outfit. Dress. All right. Good. And she, her face was pale. Good. And uh, she asked me what time I wanted to wake up. Yes. And I, I told her I needed, I needed to wake up at 6.30. She walked back up the stairs and then I woke up at 6.30. So just consider it, and uh, anything else come to your mind about it? I don't know. I, to me, it may might have been my subconscious, so I wake up at the time I was required to. Yeah. Plus, yeah. I, had a, I had a dream after that, but she was wearing white, 
the same kind of dream, but she's wearing white the second time. Mm -hmm. No, but let's deal with this one. But no other, no other facts or, or, or images occur. When you do a dream, there are three things you do. You, you first must pay attention to similes, metaphors, in order to search for the analogy. Each image in the dream is a metaphor. The way in which it functions is a simile. From those two and the play between them, we can create the analogy. So, talk more about the woman. Anything that comes to your mind about she that seemed woman? She's really familiar. Familiar. Go ahead. I knew her from somewhere. More? Um, voice was calm and calm nice voice to I really don't remember her eye color or anything like that it's good it's vague good. Um, calm voice uh, what state of mind would you say then she was in passive like easygoing passive calm with herself Mm-hmm. You mentioned this. Uh, anything else you want to say about her? Hair? She's kind of like a perfect, like a perfect woman, sort of. I couldn't tell what her hair color was because she had a hood on. Yeah, I'll put that hood over. <laughs> that's for accuracy. Yeah. She's nude too, you need to put a dress on. Yeah, that, that's right. And my all my pictures that women are nude. Um, you mentioned something interesting before about the stairs. And it was an alleyway. Do you remember you called it was metal? It was metal. Yeah. Like what? Like Victorian 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 designs. Yeah. Like kind of like a, you know, Victorian houses have those designed, designed uh -huh. balconies, but it was metal. Uh, where might you see it if you were to go visit someplace in order to see something like it? Maybe an old building in L.A. or New York. They have similar. Their the balconies are like that, but it wasn't as ornate. That's the one in my dream. That's right. The See, so it isn't down the same. That doesn't look then like it's LA. No. Balcony, metal balcony. Metal balcony. Yeah, where do you see something like that? Hmm? Anywhere? It's all right. It's just fishing. On buildings. Yeah. Okay. It was on. It was against the building, but there's no no entrance or anything mm -hmm. where, where there, there was no reason to go up there. There's no door or window. It was just... It's as if she was, that was her place. Yeah. You standing. mentioned that it was an alleyway rather than a street. It was an alleyway. Dark. Right. Mm-hmm. Curious, wasn't it? What way? It was kind of forbidding, like, mm -hmm. it, people, if it was a real place, people would really want to go down that, go down there. Mm -hmm. Because there's an element of... Unknown. Mm -hmm. Uncertain, unknown. Yeah. <coughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uninhabited for a while. Mm -hmm. Building's really old. Mm -hmm. Kind of an old Victorian kind of thing with balconies and metal. Bl uh, painted. Um, it was brick. Brick. I mean the uh, metal. Oh, the metal. It was um, iron. It wasn't painted. It was just. It's 
original color. Iron color. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Assimile means what things are like. A metaphor is what something stands for. Now, she asked then, what time do you want to wake up? Uh, what did you notice about the voice, the manner, the style? <clears throat> it was a question that, that she really didn't, she wasn't demanding it, she was just asking it as mm -hmm. if it was a favor. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. didn't say it, she wasn't commanding me. It was like a passive, like calm voice, like mm -hmm. it was like a favor. Mm -hmm. Like. She a favor. Yeah. Uh, like she would be doing you a favor? Yeah. Willing to do you a favor? Mm -hmm. oh, oh. It wasn't like I was controlling her or she was controlling me. It was like, yeah. uh -huh. like yeah. the yeah. equal mm -hmm. equalness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting tone to the voice. Like what? The part that baffled me the most was that I woke up at exactly 6.30. Mm, say it again. When she asked me what time I wanted to wake up, I told her I needed to wake up at 6.30. And then... In the morning, I woke up. It was exactly 6:30. No, no. Exactly. No. no. Uh, <laughs> in the same way, how did you say it? I just told her 6:30. I mm -hmm. didn't say anything else. Mm -hmm. And then she walked back. How? She walked back, turned around, and walked back yeah. up the stairs to the top. Mm -hmm. When she reached the top, I woke up. Yeah. Anything interesting about the way she walked? Slow. Slow. She didn't run or... What, what? She didn't run or anything. Just yeah, slow. Like, yeah. even pace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how did you say that? I need to wake up at 6.30? I just said 6.30, like, friendly. Okay, friendly. Nice that exchange. Was, yeah, nice exchange. Yeah, I was exchange. commanding her. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Um... Talk about 6.30. Just talk about 6.30. It's the time I wake up every day. <laughs> um, Go ahead. go to school, involved in learning. Right. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything peculiar or interesting about the fact that it happened a couple of years ago? Can you get closer to when that might have taken place? It was about two years ago. How many? Two years ago. What was I, going on? I remember it was like some, some important like a test or something like that, a final. I think it was a final. In what? In a, in a, I was in high school. It, yeah. was, it was finals week. Oh. Yeah. It's a curious expression, isn't it? Waking up. Yeah, what, that's rather curious. What talk about? What does it mean to wake up? Come back into consciousness. Come back to consciousness. More? Go ahead, more. I 
outside awareness. What? What's that? Outside awareness. I don't know what that means. Like when you're awake, you're aware of you're aware of what's happening outside your body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other uses of the word wake up for you? Just waking up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you made a nice gesture then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do it again. Waking up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you interested in waking up? Yeah. In what way? Um, sleeping forever isn't sound very advertising. Hmm. Hmm. Waking, up you, you, waking up, waking up allows you to experience. experience. Waking up? It allows you to experience things outside your body. You're, you're conscious. Well, uh, tell me more about that. Basically what I attribute to it. Basically what? Coming out of sleep, leaving the subconscious. And leaving? Leaving the dream. Leaving, oh, leaving okay. sleep. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, you know what's curious about this? Is there something curious about this episode? Now we go for the drama. Now we go for the drama. After you've done this, right, you go for the drama. Look for the mystery. Right. The curiosity, look for the mystery. What do you find curious about that? Who she is. Good. What else? Where I'm at. <clears throat> what else? Um, now to why, get yes, go why ahead. Why the alley is dark and why does it seem old? And That's true. Would you, would you stay with the question that she posed? Why did she ask me that? <laughs> because. Because it was a dream. M m just old. stay with the question now. Stay with the question. Yeah. What does the question presuppose? There is some importance in me waking up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And therefore, does it assume you would be in what kind of a state for that question to be appropriate? Well, watch now. What time do you want to wake up? That could be expressed in a variety of ways. What time should you wake up? Will you wake up? Uh, right, we can play. Express that. She said it that way. Do you? What time do you want to wake up? Ah, what time do you want to? Right. Yeah. Yeah. The force is on. Not. What do you want to wake up? I see. Yeah, it's very nice. Uh, does that assume you're asleep? I, I think so. Yeah. 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 You find that curious? When she when she asked me, it kind of threw me off because I thought it was I, I, I thought I was conscious. See, by God, right in the dream. Yeah. yeah. That. She said that I knew it was dreaming. Why? That's curious, right? Because <laughs> see, that's the drama. What's the drama? The mystery. It woke you up. You said. Oh my gosh. Go ahead, finish the statement. I was in a dream. I was dreaming. I must be dreaming because? Because yeah. she asked me if I wanted to wake up. Which means you must be? Dreaming. Dreaming. Yeah. So Sweet. this is a dream where the individual wakes up in the dream that they're dreaming. This is a development of consciousness, a very important development in consciousness. In a dream, to wake up to the fact that you're dreaming is a development of consciousness. And that surprised you, didn't it? It's called uh, lucid dreaming. Pardon? Lucid dreaming. Lucid dreaming, it's called, yeah. Now look here, now stay with that. That's a curious question, then, isn't it? I got a drama going, something mysterious. Ha! And uh, she's asking you, Put it back into the context now. Huh? That therefore you must be. You must be dreaming. You must be asleep. Sleep. 
sleep. All right. Dream. And she wants to know. What time I want, I want to wake up. But in this dream, in one sense, in the dream, you are awake. <laughs> yeah. So you discover that in the dream, you are awake and discover you must be dreaming. Mm -hmm. And this person, now we're going to push it now. Now imagine now that we have a transparent sheet that we drop over this and all we're going to pick up is the similes and the metaphors and play it together and push it. All right. All right. So we're going to let the figures in the dream recede and we're going to only take what he has said about them. All right. And you let the figure then recede and what it means to the individual dreamer come forward you let the others recede. So, read it for me, all right? A. Perfect woman, familiar, calm voice, easygoing, passive. Ask me what time I would want to wake up. Which brings you to? It, would, it made me aware that I was dreaming. Yeah. Uh, now watch what we're going to do with it, please. In the dream, you are awake. All right? In the dream, um, in the dream, you are awake as if you are in your everyday world. So, so what is that saying then about your? everyday world. What is what does that tell me about the everyday world? That I don't know, feels the same. <laughs> as if you are as if I'm asleep. As if you're asleep dreaming. Yeah. Right? So we're putting this in this place and reading it. Alright? So let's do that. An ideal woman, right? perfect woman, right? is now coming to your aid calmly, sincerely. Right? Can I assume you find something beautiful about her as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she comes to your aid to let you know that you are, in fact, and your everyday world is like a dream. And she wants to know, when do you want to come out of your come out of my everyday world that is like a dream? Dream. Oh. Hmm. And you tell her. <clears throat> Now, we're going to push the same level as we did before. Take the words literally. Take the words literally. Highlight the mystery. All right? Okay. Just as you did with us, do the same with us. All right. What's your answer? 630. Uh, was that the answer, or was this the answer? I just told her the time. I didn't say I need to wake up. Thank you. I just told her the so time. So then, this isn't there. No. All that's there is... The time itself, the number. 6.30. And 6.30, that's the sign. We're going to let that slip out. And what does it mean to him? It's a time when you... And... Go on the things you said before. Go into consciousness. You, wa you wash, you bathe, right? And get prepared for... Get prepared for school. A test, a final. Oh. So, she wants to know when you want to wake up from your world that is like a dream, and you tell her 6.30 is okay with me. 
<laughs> because that's the time when you traditionally get up, wake up, time for every day, right? And to get into this big thing that's happening, which is the final. Right? And for you, that is to come back to consciousness. Ah. All right, now. Let's go back into it now. What is it about that old Victorian stairs and that darkened alleyway? It's unknown, right? But she's familiar. And you mentioned that she comes back into your dream later with a different dress. So you have someone that reappears in your dream that carries this kind of significance. And that's, of course, very important for anyone to have a figure in their dream that is a helpful, helpful to you, presents themselves in a certain degree of perfection, right? Duty, perfection. Right. So now, that old Victorian, now let's do it now, okay? Darkened alleyway, certain unknown character to it, right. the stairs, um, at, at, just talk about that. What does that look like to you? What is an old Victorian house like that with stairs like that? What is that for your soul? Pictures, movies, visit? Pictures. Where? In magazines. And Any particular place? Certain houses have them. Mm. Yeah. You like looking at those pictures? Very, very beautiful houses. Pardon me? Very nice houses. Very beautiful houses. Thank you. I like that. So you push from nice to beautiful, right? It's a beautiful house. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's a beautiful electron house. Yeah. I appreciate, I appreciate the design. Appreciate. The they put into the design. I, I don't know what that word means, appreciate. Like. Like. Like, all right, like. Uh, attracted to. Attracted to, right, more positive qualities. Yeah. Right? So, so therefore, this house represents the kind of a house which has good and deep significance to you. It's appeared, and you're attracted to those kinds of houses with those kinds of stairs. You then have seen it in a variety of different ways. You're drawn to it again. Right? You find a certain beauty about them. Do you see how we're building the theme of beauty through this dream? We're pulling it. Right? Their beauty was kind of downplayed by that surroundings, though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, because you focused on the unknown dark alleyway, mm -hmm. and that dominated the images. And now we're bringing out these images, aren't we? Right. 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 Hmm. Yeah. Um, what kind of uh, role have those houses played in your life? I mean, when you look at them, you like architecture in some way, don't you? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Kind of a house that you would, what? A kind of house I'd like to live in. Ah, an ideal uh, yeah. house? Ah, a perfect woman, ideal house, right? You're now you're being guided to wake up <laughs> out of a dreamlike existence, yeah. right? And uh, the thing that was kind of disturbing is that it was the unknown alleyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It wasn't an open alley. It was an alley, and then there's just wall and a wall. Came to a dead end. The stairs were dead end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I couldn't see beyond the walls. It mm -hmm. seemed like just mm -hmm. when I, there was a dark. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see if there was a, there was a limit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By the way, what kind of decision did you have to make after high school finals? Any? Like what, what I was going to do after them. 
Just wondered whether you were facing any kind of decision after you took your finals in high school. Like what I was going to do after them? If you want to answer it that way. Be relieved that they're over? Pardon me? Be relieved that they were over? Sure, sure. But there was no particular change in your life, though, was there? Or was there? Or? No. Was that your exit from high school? No. You were still in it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Did uh, the following year make there any There were grades that counted on my transcript, though. Oh. It was, it was a permanent effect. The outcome was permanent. Oh, oh, oh. So a critical test, depending upon then where you'd go. Yeah. Ah, I see. I see. Mm -hmm. well, how'd you do on those finals, by the way? Good. Good. <laughs> Now, um, uh, she walked back, right, remember, slowly, walked back, yeah, yeah, like what? Like what? Yeah, like she was, remember, she wasn't in a hurry. She was in a hurry. Right. She just walked up casually. Casually? Same kind of manner? Mm hmm Same kind of manner? Returned to the top and mm -hmm. turned around and looked at me and then I woke up. She turned around and looked at you and you woke up. I don't understand that. How did she turn around and look at you? What was that she like? She walked up the stairs. And she turned around. turned around and yeah, give, give me that. eye contact. Yeah, yeah, what's that like? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, what's that like? That eye, what do you call it? Eye contact? What was that? Here, I'll give you some words and maybe you can use them. Distressing? No. no. Okay, let me try again. Anguish? No, no, no. You do it now. It was a familiar, warm eye contact. Mm -hmm. Oh, you said, oh, I remember that eyeball in the past. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a blank look. Yeah, sure. By the way, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to go for any answer. I want to make sure that if there is an answer there, you will give it. I'm not suggesting anything, mm -hmm. right? But would you agree she's the ideal woman? Yeah. She's the perfect woman. And now after this, she turns around and you both look at one another. If you could look at someone and have them look at you this way, what would it mean today? It remind me of her. And what kind of an event would follow from that? Indifference? Familiar, uh, familiar, some familiar. Like what would follow from me making eye contact with somebody? In, in that way, see? In that way. In that way. See, she turned around and she looked at you and you connected, right? So we're just wondering what kind of connection that was. That's all. And if you say, and they're just casual, I'll take just casual is, to, is the answer, but I want to make sure that that's what it is. That her looks fitted her mood. Like, her looks fit her mood. Easy going, calm. Mm -hmm. She didn't smile or frown. It was just like, yeah. like, like the way she would look at me all the time. I don't know. Like, yeah, it's because she's at me familiar. Like she, knew me or she knew you. Yeah, that's a look that she knew you, right? Mm -hmm. And familiar, uh, she knew you. And, uh, um, anything beyond that? Like you might look at a familiar dog or rabbit? I don't know. Okay, fire. Oh, fair enough. I remember her eye color now they're brown. Pardon? Her, eye, her eyes were brown now and now they're not. Ah, her eyes were brown. Ah. Hmm. Hmm. Now that I'm thinking more about it, I'm starting to remember more about it. Yeah, go ahead, add more to it, and I'll, with this chalk, we can work together. Yeah, go ahead. 
That's all that comes to mind now is really colorful. Pardon me? That's all that came, came yeah, to mind now. Yeah, the like brown, yeah, yeah. You see, uh, I asked the only question that I have about this, and I'll ask it once more. If she could come through the room, into this room, and look at you this way, you would then say, well, she recognized me from the past, and that's all? Or was there anything more in that like context? Like relation. Like you might have with uh, a distant cousin? Like a brother or sister. Ah, kinship. Yeah, right. kinship. Ah, take that. Right. Right. It's nice to know that you have such a kin, isn't it? Yeah. And that she, given all the qualities that she represents, could see in you and you and her a certain kinship. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then she walked back and then turned around. You see what we're doing as we're talking about this and getting states of mind the event recedes, the particular scene, and the meaning of it comes more to the forefront, doesn't it? And now you can read the story where you drop the event and carry the meaning on that level, and it all fits together, then, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. right. So that the dream has a set of signs or symbols, which then we try to discover uh, what the particular signs stand for, that's the metaphor, <coughs> then we try to see what it's like to be in those particular actions, that's the simile, like means what? What is it like being there? What is it like experiencing that? What kind of state of mind is that like? All of these are like, that's similes. And now when we have that, then we just kind of pull back from it and then read it with those meanings, and that's the analogical structure that is reflected in our and through our analysis. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, it looks very much like this woman in your dream then ha has been a recurring figure. Uh, and it would be very important, you see, to get a series of these to do this, essentially the same thing. And when you do it, work with someone, you know, so that you can pull all of this out carefully, right? With the full knowledge that you may see something an hour from now or next day or two, that may change those because of what you bring to it, right? So this is understanding, not knowing. Understanding always admits of degrees and changes. Yeah. Part that baffled me about the dream was I woke up at the exact time I told him. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I was dumbfounded. <laughs> yeah. I looked at the clock and I'm like, whoa, that was weird. <laughs> well then, what did she give you? She delivered. Huh? She delivered. Yeah. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. Well. Now, on the highest level, on the highest level, that's sometimes called the anagogic level, right? One of the most interesting questions about dream is when you play with it this way is that on what level, or is it that in, on all levels it can be applied? On what level? Like if we take this on the highest level, um, here she's a, a perfect woman, beauty, huh? in a house, 
such a dream for you, but you appreciated and enjoyed looking at and having a certain architectural uh, uh, appreciation for. You, you, it's been playing a role in your life. Right? And the woman now matches the house, the old Victorian house, and comes down to help you in this way, tries to find out what it is you want most and is willing to help you with it. And what it is that she's going to help you with, evidently, is to help you wake up from a dreamlike existence. So, you know, we're pushing that dreamlike existence, aren't we? And if that's the case, then, see, when she gets that, she then and you both recognize a kinship. Therefore, that could be quite if we were to push it in terms of the future. You have an aid in your dream world that wants to wake you up to a higher degree or state of consciousness where these kinds of experiences of beauty and perfection play a dominant role. Right, the highest level. You can bring it down and say, well, all the way down to, she remind, reminded me of my uh, cousin in Chicago. And <laughs> But the important thing in dreams is that it might be true on every level. So, uh, thank you for your help on that. Any questions about the dream? That I, yes, please. I just noticed that you didn't discuss the dreamer and where the dreamer is in the dream, the perspective of the dreamer. <clears throat> is, it, is, it, is it important? For yeah, this is where he came in. But where is he when she comes down the stairs? Does that matter? I was about... 10, 15 feet from the bottom of the stairs. Mm -hmm. In the alley? Right? In the alley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And here's also where you're coming. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Wouldn't there be a correlation maybe with the unknown dark alley is not knowing exactly the path of how to get there? Oh, uh, yes. If you wanted to push that, that is to push the possibility of that. You could ask, um, say in the dream, was there any sense that you were walking down that alleyway? Yeah. And is there any sense that um, as a consequence of her coming down, that, oh, I stopped there, right, pause, right, that. <laughs> oh. I don't know. There was like nothing before. It's like I walked a few steps in this alley and then I looked up and I saw the stairs and the woman. And I just stood there and then she came down. And yeah. See the. I took a few steps. It's what? like the dream started as I was walking down this uh, as Go. I was walking down this alley and then I saw it a few seconds. Yeah. I saw her a few seconds later. All right. Then you saw her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. and um, we're cautious about about this. Is there any sense after she turned around and you made eye contact that you were continuing or not or staying there or did you just immediately wake up? I immediately woke up. I didn't see that helps walk us. Away. So that if the issue is, you see, that he is going down metaphorically, an unknown perhaps dangerous path, the next dream would have to pick that up. It's, it is suggestive, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's right. Didn't he say it was a dead end? Yes, he did say it was a dead end, blocked on all ends, yes. And that would, in one sense, that's what I was fishing for with the, the finals in the high school, like where were you going? And I, I didn't get anything from that, but you're quite right, that's where I was going with that. Yeah. And that's the way you take a dream. Yeah, thank you. Very good. I'm, I remember there's some there's another way. Hmm. It, like the balcony and then the stairs. And I remember there's something that way. Like something mm -hmm. like hmm. Mm -hmm. Another way? Not not like that. It was like I walked, and then it kind of there was like an opened air, like like it, hmm. like a square, like a square. it was a snare. It was like mm -hmm. a path about twenty feet wide. 
and it was like an alley street, and then I walked, and there was like a, an area, mm -hmm. like a boxed area, where the stairs came down on the farthest wall, and I, I remember there was something like going on farther, mm -hmm. but narrower. But narrower. Mm -hmm. So, you see, what's interesting in dream work is to have a series of dreams, because anything that looks suggestive, and if you don't have enough there to work with, that's okay. You can watch that same image in succeeding dreams sharpen and highlighting that particular theme. And that's the most interesting thing when you get, get maybe you know five or six or ten dreams on butcher paper and just put them up on the wall, you know, and just go through them and watch it. Then you can see that whatever is behind this dream formation that it's creatively working on images over a period of over a period of time, and that working working with those images has as its goal the clarification of certain important things. Good, 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 good. I want to see what I can get unwound here. Okay, good. Now, um, would you care to play on the next level? Sure. All right, try this. All right. Now, there are two kinds of fantasies. One is that you enter into voluntarily, you set yourself up for it, right? And uh, that's a conscious choice to enter into it. The other kind is when you don't set yourself up for it, but it just pops in. These that pop in are easier for a while to explore because it doesn't deal directly with a person's fantasy formation and all the associations it has with it. Therefore, it's easier to get into this when you then get into the fantasies that just seem to come into one's mind without consciously planning for it or participating in it by working with these, it then allows you to see the way to go for these. Then, when you see how these work together, all right, one, two, A and B, then the fun thing is just random thoughts. Because then if you can see even random thoughts, fit together into an intelligible model, then you know that we're rational. Rational enough for us to see our own problems and have something within us continuously transforming series of thoughts and images, both awake and in dream, to help us become even more rational, intelligible. Curious? All right, okay. So therefore, let me suggest something for a moment. All right. And you can all try this. Right? And we'll use yours. Thank you very much, by the way. Um, su I'll suggest this. Just relax and keep your eyes open or closed, whichever is your preference. But visualize appearing, <coughs> visualize appearing in your mind's eye, numbers occurring, one to ten, over again, from one to ten, and over again. And while it's going on, I'll ask a few simple questions, and I'll tell you what they are in advance. And then just watch what's going on. And by the way, if you do then find that your mind <coughs> drops in the fantasy, just notice it. Now, let me tell you something most interesting about fantasy formation first, so you can appreciate it on another level. All right? Here. Here we are. All right. Here the numbers come somehow. Let us say at some sequence at some sequence, say the third time or so, you get to three, 
and then the episode drops in. It's going to be some kind of a drama. Just like a dream. It's going to have images. Right. Now, it's going to take on a life of its own for a while. And then you're going to then, oh, I forgot my number. Now, I want to represent that now this way. One, two, three. All right. You see, the most important thing in life, in this curious game of philosophy, is to know why we go to sleep. Next to that is the biggest question next to that. Why do we wake up? <laughs> By the why I mean <clears throat> what happens. Now, if you can address this with, with great precision, the more precision you add to this, the more interesting it will become and the more you will see. You see, this is falling asleep. This is, this is entering into another realm. You then forget all of this that you've been asked to do. This drops in. And then at some point, you wake up. Now look here, <laughs> what was it at this point that caused the waking up? Because that's not any different than the problem of waking up, becoming conscious, becoming enlightened, becoming more conscious and more consciously aware of your life and taking responsibility for it. It's all of those things. It's waking up. Look here, this is falling into ignorance. This is waking up. However we put it, that's the problem, you see? So why do we then fall asleep? And then what is it at that moment that wakes us up? Now, nah, enough talk. Okay, everyone, take a trip. And remember I said I'm going to ask you a few questions. Let me tell you the questions we're going to ask you. While you're watching the numbers, see if you can see where the numbers come from. Be attentive. Try to watch where the numbers come from. And if you can see where they go, doing very well. So watch the numbers from 1 to 10. And every once in a while, I'm going to ask, where do the numbers come from? Where do they go? Do not let that interrupt what you're doing. Continue on the numbers from 1 to 10. Cycle them again and again. All right? Good. Have a nice trip. Where do the numbers come from? Be attentive. See if you can identify where they come from. Where do the numbers go? Where do they come from?
Where do the numbers come from? Okay. Did you take a trip? Could you describe it? Again, if it's any cause for embarrassment, let's not do it. But if, it's, if you're free to discuss it, we'll use it. of any kind? Any story come in? Good. All right. Because now we can do it again, I can enter the third question. And this is uh, most interesting, and this is what we need. So we'll use this as a background. I'm going to invite you to do it again. I'm going to add one more question. It's a simple question. So I'll ask it while you go through it this time. So if you do it once more, please, then I can introduce it. No tricks. Where do the numbers come from? whether you see them or hear them. Where does it come from? While you're doing this, what is watching the numbers? Describe it. You're watching the numbers again. Where do the numbers come from? Where do they go? And while you're doing it, you're going to explore what is watching the numbers or hearing the, the numbers? All right. Did you happen to go on a story? Mm -hmm. Did you happen to go off on a story? Any image? A diagram. Okay. 
What kind of a diagram? Circles. A circle. Go ahead. That all connect. And it all connected? Yeah. To what? Together. It connected together? And uh, what was it like? They're going from top to bottom. They are going from top to bottom? Yeah. What's the? The numbers. All right. Like what? Hmm. What was it like watching the numbers in the circle? They were just like. Mm hmm. Um, it was like they were appearing. Then yeah. They disappear again and they appear again in order. That appear, that appear. They would appear, and in order, go ahead. They would appear in order in, in the zigzag, is in the zigzag shape. In what kind of an exact shape? I'm good at zigzags, by the way. I practice them. How's that? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, thank you, thank you. What's that like? Like the sensation of it? If you want, yeah. In in that daydream or fantasy. My state with the letters as they appear. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you some. Remember the great terms I volunteered before. It was distressful, anxiety-ridden, irritating. No. What was it like watching that? Interesting. Uh, like you might be interested in what? It's symbolism. Uh, what kind of interest? Like was akin to what? There's some kind of knowledge. Uh, like what? Like you might encounter where? Under what conditions? Mathematical conditions only. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, what was watching? I was watching it. Uh, yeah, I know. Describe it. It was just an image, image in my mind. Oh, I, would you mind describing? <laughs> What was watching? Myself. <laughs> I know. Would you give? How do you know it was yourself? Do you recognize it? It was. Just, I was watching. Well, I asked. You know. My mind's eye. Then. Wait a minute. Then, in some way, uh, you're aware of this, and sometimes you're aware of that. Is that right? Or simultaneously? How would you describe it? It was I mean, following the numbers. The numbers it was like following the numbers. the numbers. It was following the numbers. Right? It was following the numbers. Like what might follow what? One, two, three, four. Like a dog might follow its owner? Like a duck might follow? No, like. Like an elephant grabs another's tail? Go ahead. followed by two, and two was followed by three. They didn't move. I like looked to where they moved in order. Yeah. And what, where I, what my questions are directed to is whether or not I can get you, or from you, what it was like watching this going on. 
we said before, mathematical, that order was a kind of knowledge, symbolic. If you were involved in that under the most ideal circumstances, is that something you would enjoy or not? Probably. Probably? Oh. oh. Then it's, uh, what would you say it is? Kind of thing that you would probably, what? Like. Like, enjoy? enjoy? Be attracted to. Be attracted to? Yeah. A certain degree of, uh, what's the word we're going to go for now? Beauty. Beauty? Yeah. Certain kind of? Zigzag. Now that is, that's a certain, I don't know whether it has much order in that. What kind of order was in that zigzag, if any? Did you enjoy seeing that in the zigzag? Had any particular interest for you? Why it was doing it. <laughs> Why it was doing it? Did it have a spiral aspect to it? Or just? Like that. This? Yeah. Oh. So it brought you to inquire about what was going on in your own mind, wasn't it? Right. And it, say, so is there any themes that we're finding in this spontaneous pop-up fantasy that are akin to the dreams? You would say? The fact that um, he realized what it was he was doing and curious about what he was, what was going on. Would you accept that? Mm -hmm. Was that helpful? Say it again. You didn't hear it. Do it again. Come on, louder. The fact that um, you realized what was happening in, in your own mind and that you were curious about it. Like curious, the or in, curious about the order they were appearing in. Well, you question. You said, didn't you say earlier that you questioned why they were doing that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, see, he was questioning why they were doing that. We want to see whether we can get some more to see what's behind that. That's what we want to get, don't we? We want to see whether we can get some more behind that. Um, but you found it curious. Interesting? Interesting. Yeah. Um, as interesting as what is now to you? Like, there is a meaning to it. Ah. And if there is a meaning to it, if it might be a meaning to it, is that the kind of thing that you find? Curious. I don't know what that word means. Interesting again. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. If you could get that, if you could get in that same state of mind after this talk, would you shun it or go towards it? Go towards it. Ah, because it interests you. What yeah. is that word, interest, then? Attracted to. Attracted yes. to again. Yeah. By heavens, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of seeing that. That kind of interest. This is a pop-up fantasy. Does it have any order? Yeah. Have any beauty? Yeah. Any perfection? Yeah. Oh, you find it interesting, attracted, absorbed in it. Mm -hmm. Ah, ah. Now wait a minute. What could we say about the dream? Same things, same things. Mm -hmm. Same elements. Ah. Ah. Mm. <laughs> Would you agree he's becoming more interested about the function of your own mind? And that's what you're interested in exploring. Mm -hmm. Ah. Fascinated? Think, think more about Thinking, what my dreams are. Yeah, thinking more about the dreams. Yeah. Yeah. So then, wait a minute now. Look at here. Mm -hmm. 
Well, see, now we can ask a higher question, we say. Did this pop-up fantasy pick up some of the states of mind in the dream that took place several years before? Yes. Does that not point out that some of the same dynamics of the dream are current in a, in a pop-up fantasy? Hmm. Hmm. This is the same feel. The same? The same sensation. The same what? The sensa same sensation. I don't know what that means. Like, daydreaming is basically what we were doing, right? That was what? Daydreaming. Is what? It's like... <laughs> dreaming and, I guess, contemplating on something that are the same thing. Yeah. See, the dream is, somehow, the dream is giving you an object of contemplation. Yeah. The spontaneous pop-up fantasy is telling you what your mind is going through spontaneously, and therefore, there's a kinship between those two. It's telling you about the state of your mind. Now, if we could get it, did you wake up to the fact that this was a fantasy? What was it like when I pulled you out of it? Just the number stopped and I opened my eyes. Just stopped. Yeah, just stopped. Yeah, yeah. Faded out. You see, um, if we could get more of, more of the sequence to this, which, which I don't think we can get, because we'd need a couple more examples from several of us or you or someone else, we could actually see why we fall asleep and why we wake up. And that's extremely important. That's extremely important. And you won't believe it until you do it, and it's worth doing it, so I'll leave it for you. Now, let's go to the next one. How do you get just a random thought? Was that old bang old random thought? <laughs> now, what do I mean by random thought? I mean, would you agree you've been involved in this discussion? Yes. Good, good. During that time, was there anything that sneaked in for a brief period? That's what we're going to call a random thought, you see. That in following some process or procedure, even for a split second if something drops in, that's what we're calling a random thought. Now, there are other kinds of random thoughts, but this is what, again, using the same language, a pop-up daydream, a pop-up random thought. So if a random thought pops in and, and you just kind of be carried along by it, then it turns into a random That's thought. right. That's right. Then it becomes a pop-up fantasy. That's right. Yeah. So, is it possible that you had anything like that? Yeah. Could you recall, possibly? See what this does? This is going to make you, you know, make you aware of what's going on in your own mind. Ah, oh, boy, there's a pop-up fantasy. I'm a walking dreamer. Yeah, <laughs> we are. Mankind is not awake. We're asleep. <laughs> we're, right, we're asleep. And we're dreaming all the time. All these things are going on. Dramas are going on. We're driving along. <coughs> hey, I passed through three towns. <laughs> How did I do that? I wasn't even aware of it. No. <laughs> but even, see, if you could, all right, just take one. Could you recall any pop-up thought? This is the discussion about my dream. I was like thinking back about my dream again. Ah, come on, good. Like making? Returning to it. Returning to it. Yeah. Connections to it. What do the pop-up thoughts then do? It is the bridge between the two. Isn't that interesting? It's a natural bridge between these two realms. And if it's able to carry, as a consequence of that, 
see if we could get specifically what your recollection was of that train. Wouldn't it be interesting to know whether or not you were making connections? Yeah. If so, pop-up thoughts are intuitions. intuitions that are operating on two levels, back and forth between them. You might even call it zigzag. I was a joke. <laughs> so, if we can say this, come on, if we can say this, if we've given at least some evidence this evening to suggest that these three realms are interrelated in a very beautiful way, such that one is mirroring the other and the other is making connections as it proceeds, then what shall we say about the human mind, the everyday man, the everyday woman, us? Unity and integrity. And a lot of unity, integrity. Uh, single purpose. Beauty? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Order? Mm -hmm. Intelligibility? Wouldn't you like to meet yourself with such a mind? <laughs> That's right. That's your mind. Against this is the view you might have of yourself. See, that's a put down. Often that's a put down. That comes from another place, and we don't have enough time to do that. But this is what I wanted to represent this evening, that man can be shown to be, out of his own everyday experience, rational. There's a structure to it that man is intelligible. That intelligible structure runs through all of this. And isn't it interesting? Now watch. This you did not will. You didn't will us. You didn't will us. You didn't will us. See, we're taught that when we are willful, we are rational. At the other times, we are subject to irrational thoughts, irrational daydreams, and mad and curious and irrational dream worlds. <laughs> if this is correct, would you not agree that we don't have to will intelligibility? It naturally is going on if we appreciate it. So what I'm interested always in is bringing people to see that they can appreciate the functioning of their own mind because it's always operating on a very beautiful level when it is not willful. Because when it's willful, then another level of functioning occurs. And by the way, the willful turns out to be far more irrational. So everything is opposite in this curious game of philosophy. So, any questions about it? Any questions you want to entertain about this? Uh, entertain, did you say? Yes, your mind can be a great oh, source of entertainment. entertainment. Yeah, really, enter. TV up. Enter. Enter. Have you dreamed about that woman recently? Not recently, but a while ago. Yeah. Mm. The setting was opposite, though. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did, did you say what the two different levels of intuitive operation were for the random thought? Could you say more about that? Well, um, you see, what we need to do, what we're doing, is adding a level of speculation to this. We're, we are analyzing this, aren't we? We're adding a level of speculation to it. Once you do that, then you'll become more aware of the interaction of random thoughts as a bridge connecting it. When that takes place, that will also function on another level. It will help you make connections with your own analysis and understanding of what's going on. So not only does it make connections between the dream and the, and the pop-up daydream, but also it makes a connection to your very speculations, will help your own speculation reach a higher level of rationality. So the mind by itself is functioning for us to become more and more intelligible. In turn, intelligible. And its own terms. Thank you. Hold it. From what I understand, 40% uh, of the people 
thought were once questioned in some study, report that they don't visualize, they hear. So some people are auditory, some are video. Some people can turn them both off, both the knobs up. Both hear and see them, as it were. Okay, you can reach in there. What's it like feeling up two? Or three? It has a certain feel or texture to it? Yeah, yeah, might. That's possible too. Yes, definitely. Is any of this related to um, a thing called sensination? Where mm. you, you sense things on different levels, like you can hear a, a color. You can hear a color, and I, I don't know. I, I don't know anything about that. I just heard stories about it, and I, I couldn't. I don't deal with it. But if you have something good about it, I'd like to hear about it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure.